I'm hitting some balls here on the Foresight Quad product, which is measuring the lie angle and the loft of my golf club at impact. Uh, the other products that are out there on the market can also measure the dynamic loft angle of how much loft you deliver to the golf ball, but it's not the 3D coordinates of also the lie angle, the toe down versus toe up orientation when the club hits the ball, which is a little bit important for the direction your ball flies and therefore the curve that the ball flies on. So I've been hitting some shots here this morning on this product and I'm going to keep going and what I want to do is analyze impact and I want to look at the club delivery or the, the club head delivery into the ball as for what uh, Foresight Sports gives us. So we're going to take a look here at a few shots um, hit already this morning. Um, let's take a look right here. So, so far this morning, my typical pattern has been a shot that's been a little bit straight to a little bit left with a little bit of curve to the left. I'm hitting a six iron, um, and it's carrying about 178 to 181 on a good shot, on a, a well-struck shot. It's kind of the numbers that I've always played by. So, if we take a look at just some quick data here from what we've already seen today, we'll look at the first shot. Um, we can see here that the first one I delivered, uh, 4.1 into out. Uh, that was the club's path. Uh, the face was one degree open to the target line, um, and relative to the path, it was three degrees closed. The ball took off about a degree and a half to the right of the target line, which is pretty straight, with a small amount of side spin, 330, which labels it as fairly straight. Uh, we can see here that we've got the angle of attack of that club head that's going 4.1 into out. It's also going 4.4 down. I uh, delivered 22 degrees of loft with that 6 iron, which launched it at 16 at a spin rate of 5600. Uh, we can look over here at the strike point of that shot where the club hit about 5 millimeters low of the center of the club face and about 6 millimeters toward the toe. However, that's not that far off to really consider um, something that I, I want to look at on a long term basis. And I delivered the line of that club. 0.3 degrees toe down. So the unique factors within all this stuff for Foresight Sports is that we can get the, the, the dynamic lie of this golf club and where the ball hits the face um, in a numeric number, uh, not just in a spot on the face because we've got some paint on the face. Uh, if we look at some other numbers, uh, further, the second shot that I hit this morning was three degrees inside out, delivered the club five degrees down with a little more loft, a little more of a launch angle. Um, the face came back at one degree close, creating a touch of draw spin, but again, very small, 200 um, RPMs to the left, and uh, fairly straight ball flight. Uh, there, my impact was a little bit more solid. I hit a touch toward the heel, but more on a vertical level is zero, and I delivered at 1.5 degrees toe down. Um, so when I look at those numbers, I think those are uh, fairly consistent with the last set. Uh, and we also have the rate of closure at impact over here at 28.23 degrees per second. Uh, fairly consistent with the rest of the data if we take a look at golf club rate of closure. First one was fairly high at my first swing of the day at 5,000 and then it kind of very, got fairly consistent throughout the next few. Uh, so was the delivery of the club. 2.7 into out, 1.7 into out, 1.8 into out, 5.5, 5, 5 degrees down. Uh, a little bit close to the path, a little bit close to the path, and a touch toe down on a consistent level. Um, so what we can see with the relationship of the club head here is that so far I'm delivering a club head speed of approximately 90, degree, 90 miles an hour. Um, my efficiency or smash factor is 1.35 and I've got an angle of attack that's approximately 4.8 degrees down. The cool thing about those numbers is the standard deviation of how far I'm off from the um, uh, off from average is fairly tight. Um, club path 4.1 into out and then I got a little bit tighter so 2.6 into out overall and I didn't vary too much. Um, the face was always close to the path so I'm always predicting a ball that curves to the left uh, and the average of where the club the ball hit the club face was a little bit to the heel and a little bit low on the face but five millimeters to the heel and three millimeters low on the face isn't something I'm going to look for. It's not something I'm really going to try and adjust too much uh, for the average golfer. So the last swing was the slowest swing. It also had the one that was the closest to the heel, but I still delivered the club in a, in a fairly consistent manner. 
So let's hit one more shot here and take a look and evaluate the impact of that one. Ah, a little off the toe, didn't feel the most solid, went the most offline. So there's an evaluation or a, an example, sorry, of a shot that I, would, I could typically hit um, for whatever reason that would start a little bit left and curve a little bit more to the left. So we can take a look at the dynamics of that last shot and notice that 3.5 path into out, that didn't change much. My face was a little more close to normal, uh, to the path. It was definitely closed a fair amount to the path. It was also a little bit close to the target line. That's the first time we've seen a ball start to the left. Uh, it had a lot more draw as a result of that. But when we look at the club's uh, dynamics, the rate of closure was roughly the same, just over 2,000. Uh, 5.3 degrees down was roughly the same. 22 degrees aloft, roughly the same. And I delivered the club three degrees toe down which made me hit high on the club face and a little bit toward the toe. So when I evaluate that data right there, I'm looking at the things that changed were the strike point, obviously, the dynamic lie got toe down, and perhaps as a result of those things, that this golf club was delivered a little bit more close um, into impact. So something along the way there uh, delivered my club head into a slightly different position. If that shows up consistently, I'll address it. Uh, however, so far in the range of my data, overall, because it, it's important to look at the trends, overall, I, I delivered the club head in almost a consistent manner uh, relative to the rest of the data. It moved a little bit relative to the standard deviation, a slightly off the average in a couple of categories. However, not so much to, you know, hold the phones and reassess everything. So I'm looking at that one out of six shot as, or one, the fifth shot of the day as, oops, I hit one a little bit to the left. Back to the standard, felt pretty standard right there. Off the middle of the club face, I got a little more club speed out of that one. Uh, ball had a straight ball flight with a little bit of curve to the left, but so far, a little bit of curve to the left isn't something that I'm gonna be concerned with. I'm not interested in how much this ball is curving to the left when all I'm getting right now is a, is a yellow 2D representation um, and a number that tells me that from the 177 it carried, it was offline 13 feet to the left. I call that a very straight shot. So we look at the we evaluate the data for the impact on that one. We had impact a little bit low in the face, a little bit toward the heel. Toe 1.2 degrees, toe down again. Five degrees down with the angle of attack. Two degrees inside out. Face fairly square to all of those things. Launched fairly square. Had very little side spin. All of these things are tremendous impact. Launched at 16, all, just under 6,000 spin. All of that stuff is terrific. Uh, the ball flight, the way that it is. Um, I would say is, is more of an alignment, but in terms of impact itself, I think that that brought it right back to the standard. Um, ball speed peaked, however, numbers didn't jump too far relative to that. Um, peak height, uh, carry distance total, they're, they're a little bit of a jump, but not a lot, not something that's, that's huge, that's massive, um, not something that I would take a, take a, a, a deep look at. But overall, when I look at this from a coaching and a fitting perspective, I would say that the player, myself, delivers the club on a fairly consistent level. On average, that club's being delivered about 1.3 degrees toe down. Perhaps we could bump them up, bump, if I took the six iron and measured it across the board, perhaps we could bump the six iron up one degree. And if we understand the, the factors of that, if we bump the six iron up one degree, that might help launch the ball a little bit more to the left. But when the ball curves to the left on a standard basis, it might not be something that you'd want to do. So sometimes having something that's not in an ideal situation might add up with the player's pattern. Um, this pattern here typically is a ball that curves to the left. So getting the ball to start more straight with a lie angle adjustment would not only get the ball to start more straight, which would be a positive thing, but because now the ball, the, the the 3D club face is now pointed a little bit more left than normal with the same path, the ball might curve more left. So this situation might be one in order to straighten out the ball flight if you, if you actually put the toe down one degree without affecting too much of the impact location, that ball might fly straighter. 
So in this world right here of club fitting, I think it's very uh, dependent on what the player wants to do, the level of the, uh, uh, golf for the player is, how much they play, and ultimately, what happens just because of changing one thing? What's the overall factor of changing that? What happens when you change one little parameter in a matrix of things? If you keep your eye on the final prize and you understand how it all is going to relate, um, you can understand that sometimes a couple of wrongs here can definitely make a right.